Hello, my name is Kevin Culp and I'm an Asset Manager from the Air Force Civil Engineer Center, or AFCEC. Today, we're going to be talking about the ABCs of Enhanced Use Leasing. So, what is Enhanced Use Leasing, or EULs as we call it? It's simply a lease by the government under U.S. Code Title 10, Section 2667 of non-excess property. It's under control of the government to a public or private lessee in exchange for at least fair market value rental payments that can be cash or in-kind consideration. What does non-excess mean? It's simply real property not anticipated to be needed by the Air Force for the duration of the lease, but which the Air Force may need at some future date or the Air Force needs to retain ownership for future mission-related reason. We mentioned fair market value. This is the most probable price a property should bring in a competitive and open market under all conditions requisite to a fair sale. Given the buyer and seller are each acting prudently and knowledgeably, assuming the price is unaffected by undue stimulus. Let's talk for a minute about roles and responsibilities within the EUL process. AFCEC Installations Directorate is charged by the Secretary of the Air Force for acquiring, managing, and disposing of all Air Force real property worldwide. Our asset management toolbox consists of creative, value-based transactions, including enhanced use leases, which provide value to the Air Force, enhance mission objectives, and can boost local and regional economies. Let's talk a little bit further about roles and responsibilities within the EUL process, breaking it down into groups. As I mentioned, the AFCEC Installations Directorate leads the centralized EUL program. The Secretary of the Air Force for Installations, Environment, and Logistics provides lease execution authority and oversight. The Secretary of the Air Force General Counsel's Office provides legal and policy direction and assistance to SAF IEI and AFCEC. Installations, the most important stakeholder in the EUL process, must establish a local project champion, identify mission constraints, provide installation specific data, and identify and receive cash or in-kind consideration. SAF A7C, or the Office of the Air Force Civil Engineer, provides oversight and is the in-kind consideration authority. The AFCEC Energy Directorate is our partner for on-base energy projects. Developers and tenants are long-term partners to provide mutually beneficial and compatible projects. One of the more popular questions that we receive is, what's the difference between an EUL and a standard lease? Well, there are three main differences that exist in project development, value, competition, and funding. In an EUL, the value is derived from the economy. From competition, we utilize the request for qualifications and funding is provided by AFCEC when available. Under a standard lease, you're trying to meet a specific requirement or service with the release of a request for proposal, and it's funded by the installation. The bottom line determination is with the installation's directorate. Keep in mind, a lease is a lease and each project is unique. While there are many goals of an EUL project, we've highlighted a few here. First of all, we need to determine the highest and best use of the land or real property being utilized. We must maximize return to the Air Force, minimize the risk to the Air Force, and most importantly, have no impact to the mission. Now that we've identified the goals of an EUL project, let's talk about the process. We have a repeatable, streamlined, five-phase process that begins with project identification and continues through project management. First of all, phase zero, project identification. This is where we identify opportunities through market analysis and conclude with an investment committee decision to go forward. Next is phase one, project definition phase. This is where we identify the highest and best use of a parcel or piece of real property through a feasibility study or opportunity assessment. Phase two is the project acquisition phase, where we conduct industry day, release a request for qualifications, and select a highest ranked offerer. Phase three is our negotiation and closing phase. This is where we enter into exclusive negotiations with highest ranked offerer and execute the lease. And finally, phase four, project management. 
This is where management and oversight of the project and payments take place for the life of the lease. Let's review some facts and fiction with regards to EUL projects. Fiction. There's a loss of installation security. Fact. Fences can be moved to maintain perimeter and control encroachment. Fiction. It's not worth the effort. Fact. Upfront due diligence will ensure project benefits and can provide revenue streams for years to come. Fiction. Money will disappear into the treasury. Fact. SAF IEI policy memo states 100% of proceeds are returned to the installation. Look, we have success, and we know the process works, to the tune of nine closed projects with a net present value of $232 million returned to Air Force installations. In summary, AFCEC is dedicated to monitor the market and position EUL projects to obtain maximum value improve execution management practices, oversight and manage stakeholder expectations, and institutionalize the program by providing a streamlined process, training, and standard documents. Thank you for listening to the ABCs of EULs. Don't forget to check out our other videos in the EUL educational series.